hello guys welcome back for another video this is the last video of this year 2024 we are approaching very fast now the end of this year and it's been an amazing year and i keep saying that next year will be even better and better however it does feels like that because at the end of the year it feels like amazing because you guys just uh, keep motivating me and hopefully i have given you something back for you guys just want to say many many thanks However, this video is, is uh, like part two of the last video because last video I was talking about the foot ankle coil and how you should position it. And then there were a lot of comments when you guys were asking, are there any possibilities to do like in the head coil? Because it realized that for me that not everybody have a dedicated foot ankle coil, but not a dedicated flex coil. So most of you guys have somehow a head coil. So in today's video, we're gonna do foot ankle or ankle in a head coil. So this is the first time for me ever because usually I have a dedicated coil or flex coil I really use. So I never use a head coil, but I did see some good out of it. So and I was, I'm also very surprised about the quality and how you should position it. However, I will show you everything. Stick around. For those who knew, my name is back again. I'm an Amarai with Agofer. In my channel, I'm covering things from basic to advanced Amarai topics, tutorials, just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. So like I told you in the beginning of the video, this is the first time I ever do a head coil and I just did it as a first attempt. Uh, if I could change a little bit, I would have done it if I would redo this again. However, as it, as it is now, it's amazing results along with the deep resolve boost. So nonetheless, let me show you the results. All right, so we're going to do our ankle, right? However, we are doing now in the head neck 20 channel coil, as you can see here. And the first thing I was thinking about, I should have the anterior part like this. And you position a patient like this, lying on the pillow and uh, as comfortable as possible. The usual routine and trying to fixate it as possible, as good as possible. And I noticed that even though you're not having the front coil on, it works great. But in this test, I did try on and off with the front coil. However, it, the images was the same. Nonetheless, let's go to the next slide. All right. So my previous video, I was very into the topic of positioning the, the, the ankle, the foot. So we should try to have it as a 90 degrees on the base of the coil. This is the same here. We should try to have it 90 degrees like this at the, the leg and the foot, 90 degrees. If you're not having, in this case, the heel towards the base, you will get a, a more like a flexible, right? So that was in the foot ankle coil. So we just should just think the same whenever we're using the dedicated head coil. So as you can see, I tried, this is like the first attempt. If I could redo this, I would have done this a little bit differently. I tried to build up with some cushions just to have the, the foot lying on as comfortable as possible and like get a more like a 90 degree. And I would try to do a positioning uh, with the sandbags, try to fixate it. And uh, as you can see here, fixate everything as I could as possible, just to try to make it as comfortable as possible and try to lie still. And the results is like this. In the upper row, the, the, the DRB or the deep learning from Siemens is on. This is done on the 3T Vita Fit. However, I'm very sure that this is possible on the 1.5 as well. All right, lower row is the same sequence, just one scan and I retrospective turn it on and off just to comparison. So we won't redo the scan. And if there are some movements in between, then it's very difficult to compare. This is just one scan, okay? One scan of this, and then I get the retrospective, turn it off. And you can see here, it's uh, upper row is on, lower row is off. And it's uh, for me, it's amazing results because if you look at the parameter, uh, we are using the deep resort boost along with the sharp and uh, a high one. This is a PD weighted turbo spin echo fat sat. It's very homogeneous. This is one thing which I noticed. Another thing I noticed was you can see the resolution is high. You know, we're going with the high acceleration part four to get the scan time down. We are covering with 22 slices and it takes only 30 seconds. This one took 30 seconds in head call. So that itself is amazing, right? But if you turn it off, you can see that there's a lot of noise. So if I didn't have deep learning in my scanner, I would must uh, have invested much more time 
get rid of a little bit resolution maybe and of course add a little bit time to get more of the SNR because I cannot deliver images like this to a radiologist because uh, that's not good at all but with the DRB it's amazing so let's look at the next one this is a T1 weighted and look at the result, uh, resolution is 0.18 interpolated it's the same here covering everything is the same and it's taking one minute you can see there are noise here and there are noise here so in these settings if I could redo this I would have pushed this sequence even more as, as long as you see a lot of noise here and then you get rid of the noise then you know you are at the the peak point right because if you turn the DOB off and you see there's much more signal that means that you can push it even more the reason we want to use or uh, use the DRB is that because without DRB if you have a lot of noise and you eliminate the noise with the DRB that's when you know the limit so further on I did a whole protocol and it was so fast so this is a stir and let's look at that one it's the same here uh, high resolution pad 4 21 slices covering the whole ankle and the one this one took uh, around one minute or so uh, turning it off you can see there are some noise here as you can see the next one is a tub tubus paneco T1, a sagittal, also high resolution, covering the same. And I see here that I could push this even more. There are some noise here and here and here, but it's not that so noisy that you cannot use the images. It's, it's amazing, right? It's pretty good. So that means that in theory, if I could redo this, I would push this sequence even more with the DRB on. All right, let's move on to the next one. This is the last one, the T2. So it's amazing res uh, resolution, 0 0.16 interpolated in that specific coil. 30 slices, it covers a lot, and it takes around 1 minute and 10 seconds. Uh, this one is at its peak, because I can see there are a lot of noises here in the image. So maybe I could push this a little bit more, but not that much, because you can see it is already at its peak. However, what I learned from doing this for you guys is that in the head-neck coil, let me show you. I can see that there are a lot of space here. So if the patient is hurting, it doesn't fit in the dedicated core with the flex is very difficult. It doesn't fit there. Uh, maybe the patient has a cast. The head neck is amazing for that because you can see there's a lot of room here. With all this room, my first thought was uh, like can struggle with the facet because there's too much air, there's too much room for this. It's not good. However, you saw the result is amazing. So if the patient's foot is bay with the cast, maybe you should use a head neck coil like this and trying to optimize the sequence thereby and next to that i'm very surprised that this coil or this position and what i did here provided me such good images like that and uh, of course without the drb or the deep learning you would have must have invested more time but with the drb is amazing results and if you ask me maybe we shouldn't buy a dedicated coil or flex coil uh, however you should buy because if you use a dedicated coil, it's more reliable and doing and every radiographers will do this the same each time. If you're doing like this, it's very up to each radiographers to position it as as, the, um, as good as possible. So there might be some variations if you're gonna compare from from time point to another time point. If you use a dedicated one, it's much more easy to do it precisely each time. And another thing is that maybe you shouldn't buy a flex coil then. Of course you should buy a flex coil because the flex coil is not meant for only foot ankle, it's meant for the whole body. So the flex coil we use it for the, we use it for many cases like the elbow, the, the arm, uh, forearm, whatever. So it's very, very good. But this is like a second option, it's very good to have, knowing that it's possible, having a plan B, like a protocol, a plan B protocol. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you find this video valuable. Nonetheless, it's been an amazing journey so far. And the next year, I expect to have even more good content. And uh, thanks for following me. Before we close up, I just do have a question for you. Have you done the scan like this before in the head coil for foot ankle? If so, let me know in the comment section down below. So I just want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we catch up early next year. So peace out.